Hi folks, excuse the uh, silly headphones. We're gonna try a hybrid video here showing how to post a file from Fusion 360 over to your CNC machine to get the code running. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So we've got our file here. This happens to be a set of soft jaws, which I actually already made for the 440. I wanna post this code that has this adaptive operation and this 2D contour. When you're posting, make sure you pick the setup because that's going to post both operations. If we had just clicked, say, this one or that one, it would have posted whichever one we'd selected. So I'll go up here to setup. And before I click post, I go over here and I like to keep my thumbsticks organized in a little bin right here um, I happen to really like these little red ones. They kind of hold up well. They sound silly, but these are inexpensive and they work great. Uh, we are working on getting our controllers wirelessly linked with Dropbox, but haven't gotten there yet. So I stick it in my computer, click post, which is the G1, G2, and I have the correct post processor selected here, which is the, for me, it's the Tormach Pathpilot Beta. I'll show you at the end of this video where to select or get more post processors from, but as long as you have the right one selected, and if you say only use the mill, you'll never need to change this. Click post, it's gonna post it in the thumbstick, and this uh, program called Brackets automatically pops up. And the thing I wanna confirm here is all of the tools that I'm using are shown in this first list. I'm only using one tool here, um, but again, that's a good way to check to make sure you didn't accidentally post, say, just one of the operations. I don't ever edit this code. I don't believe in it because uh, it's a dangerous thing. I try to do everything in the cam operations here itself. So now that we're done, grab your thumbstick here. I have never once in my life actually used the Windows eject command head over to our machine and go spend the five dollars to buy a USB extension cable um, it makes it so much easier plug in my thumbstick for the Tormach users out there oh my god please buy the, the touchscreen it's so much nicer so there's my folder here's my file right here this first one I click copy from USB it's now going to show up on my Pathpilot controller. So I'll click that. Basically that's transferring it from the USB stick over the hard drive. I'll now hit load G code and boom. There's my code on the left. There's a render of the thing on the right. I can use my mouse and scroll around and look. Oops. And look at it, which is kind of cool. Um, and, and then you're ready to start setting up your work position and, and rock and roll. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you want to see more about picking post processors, stick around. Otherwise, I'll see you next Friday. We use four machines. We use a plasma cutter, a lathe, and the mill. Um, I have an extra post in here that we were experimenting with fourth axis work on, and I've got two different lathe posts. So where you should go for us, I just Google Tormach post processor. That's gonna take you to a Tormach page. And somewhat ironically, you're gonna click this first link here, which is going to take you to a Fusion 360 uh, page where you can download the generic Tormach post, at least for the mill. So here's the thing. There's a question with posts of who really owns the post and who's responsible for it. If you, in, the, in the sort of big boy world, when you buy a really expensive big machine, you may have software that you have a third party service contract with. So let's say you're using uh, SolidWorks with HSM Works. Well, you're, the folks that resold you HSM will write a custom post for you. I've never done that. My understanding is even when they're modifying an existing post, it's gonna be 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, maybe a few, multiple thousands, depending on the complexity. If you're wondering, well, why do I need a custom post? Well, 
Actually, I'd love to hear from the comments below about the, the cooler examples, but some of it may have to do with um, procedures at your company. Do you want the machine to go to a certain position when the parts are done? Do you want coolant to stay on between operations? Do you want spindles to turn off when it's at clearance planes? Or do you want it interfacing with a robot or a cell? Or There's more complicated stuff that generally isn't going to affect uh, the day-to-day, -day, especially for us garage guys. Um, I never really mess with most of these settings in here. Um, one example is on the lathe post I'm using right now, I have set the max spindle speed to 2500. Um, and the other thing I was going to mention, oh, so when you get Fusion 360, it comes with lots of posts. Um, you don't see them here because I'm in the post folder I made for myself which is this random folder that has HSM Pathpilot posts. I also keep my tool libraries in here. It just helps me keep them organized, including when we get experiment posts, old posts, try to stay organized. Um, but your Fusion 360 probably looks like, if you click Setup, Generic Posts, it's going to populate a list here. And this is pretty amazing. There are a lot of base machines in here. And I can't vouch for this personally, but my guess is that Take, for example, this generic cost post probably works if you've got, you know, a 2004 VF2 or something like that. There's a UMC 750. There's some generic FANUC posts. Uh, I think there was some, was it a Mazak? Uh, lots of common machines. The great news is not only is this a good starting point, but um, if you do need to get a post edited, using starting from here is a lot better than starting from scratch. So I hope that answered the questions, folks. As always, we appreciate thumbs up, subscribing, and liking the video. Take care. See you next Friday.